Welcome back to another episode of the Fresh Crits of Melbourne. Wait, sorry, no, the Fresh Crits of Sydney doesn't have the quite it's the same ring to it. We're here with the Southern Cross Cycle Club, where they're hosting Sydney's Super Crit, which was on the 20th of November. And there's a fair bit to discuss, but as you probably can recognize, uh, we've got the, the great man, Jensen Plowright, once again, um, running the cameras down at the Super Crit. So this is a field of about 60 riders. Yes, I counted every individual rider. Do not quote me on that one. And we've got this fantastic closed circuit, which is specifically designed for crit racing, I can imagine. If uh, For those who do know, please comment below. So if you're new to this channel, um, I try to put up as many crit racing, road racing sort of uh, videos and races, power data overlay, all that kind of stuff, and uh, I try to commentate over them. So Jensen's running solo today, and you can tell that because we're currently, uh, I think he's just actually at that one moment figured out that he probably hasn't paid off enough riders for this race as another Oliver's rider launches off the front um, after chasing down number 24 here. So if you like this sort of stuff and you want to continue hearing and seeing more of what I've got in store, please hit that like button and most importantly subscribe because coming up um, in the next couple of videos, we've got some new up and coming and elite cyclists who are uh, willing to risk their lives once again to strap some GoPros on themselves and record some crit races. Now let's talk a little bit about the course. So on screen, you see the big Shimano banner. That is the start finish point. And from here, they make a gradual left-hand turn into a really sharp, fast descent where the riders are hitting up to 60 to 70 kilometers an hour. Once they get to the bottom of the, of the descent, there's a really nice sweeping left-hander, nicely cambered for the riders, but unfortunately then they're faced with some uphill drag as they uh, come back around the top of the course. So all in all, the course is about 1.6 kilometers long and it takes, uh, give and take, one and a half to two minutes to get around this course, obviously dependent on the effort. To make matters worse today, on the downhill part, the part that they're on now, they've got a really fast tailwind. However, as soon as they make that sweeping left-hand corner at the bottom of this hill here, they're faced with a belting headwind, which just makes matters worse, especially when you're punching up a hill. So there's obviously some things that they need to navigate here as they uh, hit this sweeping left-hander. Beautiful line there. Uh, Jensen picks up a couple of riders, absolutely no stress. I think he picked up seven or eight riders there just, just in that corner. Um, and now straight into that headwind. So that's the course in a nutshell. Now let's get to some racing. All right, there's still plenty of time left in this race, uh, about 43 kilometers. I just wanted to highlight this amazing line. Do not do this at home, kids, but Jensen can pull it off and he manages to do a little bit of CXing along the way and picks up about 14 places just on that bottom corner. So what I wanted to do now is just take this time to talk through a few of the different teams um, in this race and damn straight they're riding like they're in teams. So you can see here we've got ZCC. Now, full disclosure, well, it's probably not fairly obvious, but I'm obviously not from Sydney, so I don't fully know the teams. I don't know who they are, so please comment below. Bring me up to speed. We've got uh, ZCC. We've got Bridge Lane, obviously. We've got the NM NCMG. Um, Team Olivers, and obviously a few others that I might have missed. And they are 100% racing for each other. If there is one person up the road, it's not fun and games this. You know, you're not just sprinting for primes for, a, you know, a, an old uh, big M and some out-of-date shapes. No, no, no. This, there's cash on the line here. We're not messing around. And you can see there's already one guy up the road, and Jensen wants none of that. And um, yeah, so we're just pretty much on from the gun and nothing really gets away, or does it? So what we'll do now is we might skip ahead to the first sprint prime and we'll see how that one plays out. Stay tuned. Does riding very, very close together make you anxious? Well, maybe look away, because this is basically what this entire race was, is riding basically elbow to elbow. And really, if you're relatively new to crit racing, this is something you should be practicing with your friends. Get out on the grass and practice bumping, because as you move up your grades, uh, it's inevitably gonna happen, and it's something that you really need to be uh, practicing, because if you do get bumped on the bike, the last thing you wanna do is by bringing the peloton down. So. We're in the mix. Uh, we're basically 40 kilometers left in this race. Please ignore that time number. It's 
obviously a little bit out. Um, but we're going to go for the first prime. And you're going to know that because you're going to hear the race commissar blowing a whistle and that obviously signals a prime. And basically what a prime is, is something that just mixes the race up a little bit, makes things a little bit more interesting. It basically... You can hear the whistle. It basically uh, lets, uh, is an opportunity for other riders who might not be there at the end of the race to sprint. Um, and if whoever crosses that start finish line first, win some money. Or maybe it's some coffee beans or a hat or who knows. But for this one, um, I think there's a bit of cash on the line. So that's why already the boys are lighting it up 60 kilometers in this tailwind downhill bit. And Jensen's in the wind. He desperately needs to find uh, some space to get in a wheel so that he can save some energy for the final sprint. So fortunately for him, the rider in the Blue Canyon bike dropped the wheel and Jensen was able to force his way onto number 43 in the Speed Pro kit. And where he overtakes him and is able to sit in the Oliver's chain. But they just keep leaving that inside gap open and Jensen has to do a little bit of uh, bumping to, to force his way on now. I'm not going to commentate if that was a good call or not, but everyone stayed upright. That is absolutely fine. And he's essentially now found himself in fifth wheel, which is a good spot you want to be because now it's going to be really hard for any attacks to get away because not only are they pushing up into that uphill section, but it's obviously as well going to be a ripping headwind. And as we know, it is quite hard to get any sort of separation in the headwind because it's so easy to jump in this draft. But nonetheless, one of the riders goes and has an attack. Jensen spikes up to 900 watts in order to uh, to keep in the wheels and he's sitting very very tidily in third position which is ultimately coming into the final sprint the best spot you want to be in now here with the finish line only a few hundred meters away he sits in the draft lights that up and then when he's close enough launches over the top up to 12 14 1400 watts does it quite easily crosses that start finish line and pockets himself some cash, which I hear he bought the entire peloton some beers after the race. And then looks behind, notices he's got a bit of a gap, and goes, I'm gonna get on with this. He goes super, super aero, gets nice and low on the bike, and basically drills it and gets some really solid separation. Knows full well behind him, there is a rider that's bridged across. Now, obviously, these guys are going to be cooked. They've just launched a 1,400 watt sprint. They're going to be, they're not going to be doing nose breathing. But, you know, with this course, the handy thing is, is you have a fair bit of time to recover on that downhill part of this course and tailwind. So you can get that heart rate nice and low, get that lactic out of the legs before you come around that sweeping left-hander and drill it back uphill again. Now you can just make out in the rear cam a couple of riders that are actually coming or entering into that sweeping left-hander. So the boys have got a pretty tasty little gap and to be honest, they haven't really done much to get it. They basically just carried on with, uh, with the sprint prime, which is uh, which is basically forced the entire peloton to chase back on. and. Jensen's probably thinking, you know, this is two things. Obviously, I'm not just going to, you know, slam on the brakes and wait for the peloton to catch up. He's just used his momentum from the uh, from the sprint prime in order to get away and forced a few of the other teams to use up a few of their riders in order to chase this break back. Very tactical. And you can see here, one of the Oliver's riders done exactly that. He said, this, this move is threatening. So he's done a fairly all-out effort just to bridge across here. And basically, Jensen's looked behind and said, mate, take it. The peloton's only a few seconds away. I'm not into this. You know, I've just done a huge effort. Um, you're not getting away. Everyone's way too motivated. You do the rest of the work. And for some strange reason, looks like that Oliver guy was wanting to uh, bring the group across. So, strange things up in Sydney. Uh, but let's skip ahead to a uh, little bit more of this race. So it's been about three kilometers since the last clip and I just wanted to highlight JP's ability just to move throughout the peloton in really limited spaces like we have today and also what we get on single laid roads like you would see at Tour of Mansfield and also Tour of Bright. So you can see, just wait for this rider in front of us to move to the left. JP identifies that there's some nice room to move here. He slides himself up, you know, 10, maybe 15 riders up. When the pace is low like this, um, you really want to be moving forward up in the bunch because it doesn't cost you any sort of uh, efforts or anything like that. So just wanted to highlight a quick little clip there, but let's move it forward to where things start to really heat up. Come on, boys. Try to cap. 
You just heard it there, JP looks behind and you can see in the rear cam that the boys do actually have a half decent gap um, on the rest of the peloton behind. You can see there's a small group of riders trying to bridge across as well. And up the road, there's actually probably a ride, about four or five riders up the road as well. So the race itself has really started to blow up now, you know. It's been 45 minutes of hard racing, ignore the elapsed time on the, uh, on the data there. So it's really blown up and with 12, a little bit over 12 kilometers left in this race, um, things are starting to really look good. This is the, this is the prime time where you want to be in a break because um, it's going to give you the best chances to, to win the race. So we're going to skip a little bit further ahead and see how this one plays off. But look, as you can see already, it's like trying to herd cats. No one's really doing any work. No one really wants to drive the pace. JP um, is trying to sit in the wheels just to get his uh, his heart rate down and get his uh, legs full and get the lactic out of his legs. Now, the bridge lane rider there who's working alongside with JP is actually pulling some nice turns. But for the rest of them, they're cooked. And you can see all of a sudden the, the group that was behind chasing on have now caught up. And that means the brake's probably blown out to maybe 10, 12 riders. And when there's 10 and 12 riders in a break, maybe even more, and you can see the other riders up the road there, that just gives more and more riders the opportunity to sit in and not do any work. So what do you do in this sort of situation? It's a really tough one. Do you try to like motivate the rest of the guys to roll turns, but you're gonna know full well that no one's gonna wanna do that? Or do you attack the group and hope to get away? But you know, we've seen so far in this video that every attack Jensen's tried to put in has just been brought back. So. He found himself in a pretty tricky situation. Let's see how he works himself out of this one. So we've skipped ahead just a couple of minutes and with nobody working and you can see the other group just up the road, Jensen decides to get on the front foot and absolutely jam it on the downhill tailwind section of this course, almost hitting up to 70 kilometers an hour um, as he chased down that break. But little does he know, and we can just see it in the rear cam, how many people are actually in this break now. It's almost its own little mini peloton. Um, and it isn't until this moment that JP looks behind and actually realizes how many people are there and is obviously pretty annoyed that he's basically dragging 10, 15 guys around the course um, sitting in his draft. So he's got to do something about it. And the peloton has to do something about it as well. But it all just comes down to who in this group is going to strike first to break apart this little group here. So two riders have just gone off the front and I wanted to highlight some, uh, some acting that would go well in the Golden Globes. It's Oliver's rider here with this, the softest pedaling ever, gets called out for it by JP as he lets him through and absolutely jams it spiking up to almost 1100 watts. The Oliver's guy's not just gonna let him get away either with his team and up the road. So he jumps on JP's wheels, they cross the start finish line with only a few laps to get to left in this race. Uh, we've got here three riders here, but you know in front of them there is the other group of two You can see it there in the, in the camera in the shot there. That's an Oliver's rider and another guy now The issue is is we've all got to work together in order to bring this break back But the guy in the green kit doesn't want to roll over the bridge lane rider So JP has to do it again burning yet another match in this race And he's obviously getting a little fired up because no one's willing to work Obviously, the Oliver's Racing guy is not going to help bring this one back because his teammate's up the road. So it's all been left down to JP's uh, hands or legs once again as they come down into this bottom corner. He gets super, super error. That's a nice little shot for uh, the uh, FDJ promo um, sponsors there. Finally, they chase down the Oliver's group only to um, basically he's going to be expecting the other Oliver's rider to attack over the top. Fortunately... He's obviously pretty cooked as well, and the Oliver's Racing guy's probably happy to keep his teammates together um, because there's still, I mean, there's still 9Ks left in this race. So it's probably too early for them to counter and instead wait for the rest of the riders in the group to do the attacking and bridging and bringing back. As you can see, a couple more riders launching some attacks off the front. So this is just basically constant swing punches until the, uh, till the final bell lap. With uh, about 6Ks left to go, uh, we're still in this mega group that's up the road. The Oliver's Team Racing guy launches an attack followed very smartly by another rider. 
a lot of the other guys do identify that this is a move that could potentially stick because it just reduces um, the other Oliver's guy, guy in, the, in the bunch so he can sit in. But JP plays this one pretty smart. He sits in, waits for a few riders to go across before essentially playing leapfrog to get around. Number 36 is absolutely cooked, flicks the elbow, I, uh, JP realises he's done and does it. So he bridges across up to 700 watts just to get across, you know, because we are going into this headwind here, you're going to want to do that quickly and not let them get away in that tailwind. JP is lucky enough to get across and, um, and basically now what was originally that bigger group of about 20 riders, that's been whittled down to six with an Oliver's rider, a couple of Z, ZCC, a bridge lane, and JP. So, some interesting racing. But in the rear cam, you can see that other group is also kind of bridge across. And that's um, probably been sparked by that other Oliver's rider who's broken away from that group and come across. And that's probably ignited a chase from the group behind. So, some very interesting tactics going on here down in Sydney. It's not for a dull race, this one at all. Again, we've skipped ahead a little bit further and an Oliver's racing guy again launches another attack off the front. The wind has picked up here in Sydney. It's hurricane-like conditions. You wouldn't get this in Melbourne. And, and as you see with the race commissaire holding in his hand, there is three laps to go in this crit race. There's a sign there. So the guy from Bridge Lane has identified that th that Oliver's, ra Oliver's racing move is pretty threatening. He's jumped onto the front and helped JP through that headwind part of the section. And you can see in the rear cam, the group is once again all back together. Um, although it's been little down to maybe 10 to 15 riders uh, away from the uh, original 20. And JP's on the front once again, just begging for the rest of these riders in this grace to come around, roll around and help him and support him and try to bring back this Oliver's Racing rider. Because look, this race is not gonna be, um, it, it's gotta be a team effort, you know? That's definitely illegal, number 33. But look, this is a crit race and we'll let that one slide. Um, you know, as we're coming into this left hand, that Oliver's Racing guy has a pretty, pretty small th two second gap and I think he's identified that this one isn't going to get away so he sits up recovers as we get closer to the top of the course now you might be asking is why isn't JP jumping into this guy's draft well you want to not essentially close down the gap you want to let that Oliver's guy just let him string out there but knowing full well that if he Oliver's guy does launch another attack JP has the effort to bridge across and get there in, uh, in a few seconds. But it also, the other side of this, also means that when JP swings wide, he's gonna encourage the rest of the group to roll through. And that's gonna give some, um, that's gonna give JP some time to recover as we come into the headwind part of this race. He's sitting really, really pretty, very well protected. Um, but in saying that, I've just realized that there is now three Oliver's team racing riders in this move. So the odds are definitely stacked against the great man. Um, with two laps to go, it's anybody's race. But probably all of his teams racing race to lose with three riders in this peloton. And right now, they've got an all of his racing guy on the front here, and um, that's only going to mean, and the rest of the peloton knows it, that another all of his team racing is just going to attack straight over the top because they know full well that their all of his racing guy is not going to uh, want to bring this one back. He gets to sit in the wheels and let his sprinter recover. Um, so again, he's gone off the front on the tailwind section of this course and it's left up to the bridge lane rider to try to sit in and bridge across to that, towing the rest of the group along with it. But as you can see, that gets brought back and everybody sits in with two laps remaining. Nobody's gonna let anything get away at the moment. So what I might do is we'll skip ahead and we're gonna pick this one up at the bell lap. Stay tuned. You can hear there, we've just got the bell lap. There is one lap remaining in this bike race and we've got the bridge lane rider sitting on the front, just trying to keep that pace nice and high for JP to avoid any sort of attacks coming over the top. Um, which is fairly easy when you've got this tailwind section uh, and downhill section. The group is naturally really, really strung out at 55 kilometers an hour. If you're going to do an attack over the top of that, you're going to be having to go 65 to 70 kilometers an hour, which is near impossible. We haven't seen that today. 
You can see the bridge lane rider here pulled up right on JP's wheel. He is the designated sprinter and he wants to be marking JP completely out of this race, which is fairly obvious because of what they've been doing this entire clip. So another um, Oliver's racing rider sees that the bridge lane rider is getting a little tired. He comes to the front and keeps that pace once again nice and high. None of these teams want any sort of attacks to go up the road because they don't want to be wearing out any of their riders. So they're really keen to keep that pace nice and high throughout the course. However, that's obviously easier said than done after you've been climbing up those hills into that headwind after 60 minutes of racing, the legs are dead. ZCC launches an attack on the outside here and JP calls the front of the race to let them know that he's trying to get across. The Oliver's rider moves across to try to mark that move, but the guys are spiking up to 900 watts in order to keep in the wheels. JP's positioned himself pretty well on the outside protected pass of this course as he taps the Oliver's rider just to let him get a space to come through. We're now into the headwind section of this race. The finish line's just in sight. JP launches his sprint out, knowing full well that there's the Oliver's rider on his wheel, but it's going to be too, too hard to hold up those watts. He's been sitting in the draft this entire race. And number 24, Kurt Ether from Oliver's Team Racing takes out the win, JP second. And that's the bike race, ladies and gentlemen. It is all over. It was a brutally tough race for the guys. Headwind, hills, everything like that makes things really, really spicy. But look, if you enjoy these types of videos, if you like this stuff, please, please subscribe. Tell your mates, hit that like button. If you see yourself, make sure you um, comment in the, uh, in the comments below because I love hearing from everyone. So till next time, thanks for watching and ciao.